have these fine folks of Columbus been treating you guys this Oh, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Absolutely. You guys great. are terrific. Yes. You guys yeah. are terrific. These Give yourselves a hand, yes. We wouldn't be here without you guys. So thank absolutely you. not. That's the chairs are, are horrible, though, I want to say. <laughs> yeah. The worst chair I've ever sat in for a... <laughs> <laughs> that's, probably, probably, that's my fault, I too. love Columbus. Yeah. Is this uh, anybody's first time here in Columbus? No. A um, few years ago, about 2018, something like that, before pandemic, uh, I was up here. But this is second time. It's my first time. And my second time, too. Second time. Yeah. How many of you, this is your third day here at GalaxyCon Columbus? Woo! Okay. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. And how many, this is your first day, your first and only day here. And you're spending it here with us. Uh, that's Thank you. That's got to that's really? mean the world, right? Like, there's so... That's the thing about GalaxyCon. There's so much to do, but when yeah. they come and show their love and appreciation to you, that has to be the best feeling in it the is. world, right? It is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. Yeah. For sure. And can you, can you talk a little bit uh, about that? Because, again, you are in a studio, right? You go in a studio. There's, right. a, there's a mic. You just talk to that. You, at the end of the day, you go, you go home. Mm -hmm. But when you come to events like this, you get to see people, you get to see their smiles, you get to hear their stories, uh, especially with you, Kathleen, you know, uh, growing up Sometimes with, tears. Right, tears. Which I share with also. Right. I, I, <laughs> I mean, you, you guys have to be sharing so many tears, so many stories. Yeah. What is it like to be able to meet your fans and share those stories, share those tears? Yeah. I mean, for me, so I was cast as Dora when I was seven years old, and I did her voice till about 18 years old. Now I'm 33, so I do feel old. But um, when I was younger, I don't think I understood the power of Dora and how much of an impact the show had on families. Like, I, I would meet families and kids growing up, but now as a 33-year-old, meeting so many of you who are, around, who are around my age and you guys sharing your stories of watching Dora with your families, um, it really touches my heart, and I see it in a whole different light. And it really makes me feel like my work as Dora is complete. So, and I wouldn't have had that if I haven't met you guys this year. So it's been an honor for me. Yeah. I, I, oh, go ahead. You, you, no, go ahead. I mean, for me, this is just like, I never take this for granted. You know, that, that I had no idea. I knew that Courage the Cowardly Dog was a popular show. But I had no idea that, it, I mean, I was, I'm a work, working actor. I'm a guy who acts and gets jobs sometimes. And this was a really cool job to be the lead character in a cartoon series, a, kind of an esteemed job sort of thing. And I was really excited just to be able to, to work. And the fact that it was a success and did go four seasons, you know, uh, you know, made me really happy. I had no idea, not only that it was popular, that people would want to meet me and want to spend time with me, but that actually the emotions, as you were talking about, the, the tears and the joy, I mean, the people crying, you know, because of memories of who they were watching it with and their grandmother or, you know, parents and people even come from, you know, broken homes or difficult, uh, you know, lives as kids, you know, bullied and all that stuff. So the idea of courage being this sort of source of joy, of sort of comfort for them, and that also even somehow the idea, again, none of this could I possibly imagine, the idea that somehow the message that, you know, like Schwarzenegger, you know, doesn't, you know, goes off and saves everybody from the evil people, right? But... You know, the idea of, and viewing that as courage, the, the real courage is when someone is so terrified and has so many anxieties and so much fear, and somehow at the 11th hour has to reach deep within when it counts and face their fears and fight off the evil demons, wh whether real or, or metaphorical demons. So, uh, you know, I had no idea it was such a deep show <laughs> until you people started coming to see me. Absolutely, give it up for yourselves. Because yeah, uh, that, give that it up really absolutely. Yourselves. Yes. Yeah, it, uh, gosh, at, at my booth, uh, well, I've been doing this voice so long, uh, uh, goofy for 37 years now. And still and, doing it. And still doing it. And, uh, uh, but like a lot of people talk about a goofy movie, which came out in 1995. And many people come up and talk about how, you know, I couldn't talk to my dad and that movie brought us together. And those are great stories to hear because it, it kind of lets you know that, hey, we're doing a job, but 
it's more than that. To a lot of people, it has real deep meaning. And uh, occasionally you talk to kids on uh, like uh, famous phone friends, uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation stuff to kids in hospitals, and it has real therapeutic power. We had one kid who was, had uh, leukemia, and her mom had called, and she wanted to talk to Mickey Mouse. And so Mickey gets on and, and says, you know, Pluto takes his medicine, and uh, he feels a lot better, right, Pluto? And whoo, you know, do that. And then about uh, three months later, we found out from the, the mother that because of that one small little interaction with Mickey, her whole attitude changed, and she went into remission. Wow. So it's like, wow, there's some power with these characters, and I try not to take that for, uh, you know, for granted, and so, and we learned that from you guys, and talking to us, and hearing your stories, because it was said, we're, we're just in a booth with a microphone and a script, and you don't really get the, the power of this stuff. Wow. Well. Yeah, I, I, it's, it is remarkable to, uh, to see, I, I, you know, passing by and, and being involved in, in the convention world, I get to see it. I, I can't imagine that the weight on your shoulders, but I get to see it. I get to see the, the tears. And for me, even as a bystander, I, I feel like I was touched with, 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 those, uh, with those stories and those uh, interactions. Uh, now, it is Christmas. We have, there was a, there was a Christmas <laughs> rave here in this. Uh, yeah. uh, so I'm going to ask uh, you guys, so do you guys have uh, any, uh, any holiday traditions, uh, you know, around this time? Drinking whether, a lot, yeah, that's <laughs> about it. <laughs> whether, whether it is, you know, uh, Thanksgiving, whether it is the Christmas season, whether it is the, the Hanukkah season. Um, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm tearing up just being next to you, Bill. I, I haven't met Gosh, him. This is the thanks. first time that I'm meeting him, and he's talking, and I'm like, that's my childhood, so I'm here. I'm like, oh, my goodness, stop, stop crying. Stop crying. <laughs> it's amazing. It's a power of animation and the power of your voice. It's incredible. Anyway, so Christmas. I'm Latina, so I celebrate Christmas uh, on the 24th, so Christmas Eve. Anybody else out there? Latino? Not yet. I'm from okay, I'm from Florida. Yeah. I'm from Orlando, like the Disney area. So yeah. I celebrate Christmas starting in August. Oh, okay. right, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, it starts yeah. right you know, after the Fourth of yeah. July. Yeah. yeah. The twenty fourth. Yeah. yeah, we do it, the, and then Christmas Day we don't really do anything. Okay. No, we open <laughs> yeah. presents on Christmas Day yeah. early, and then yeah. just eat and sleep. It's kind of yeah. like a second Thanksgiving. No, we do presents and, uh, and eating yeah. on the twenty fourth. Do you go to mass on on the twenty fifth? No. Uh, it depends. If it falls on a Sunday, then yes. But you normally know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my Christmas. I I spend time with my uh, my my Christian wife's uh, family on the other side because I'm uh, I'm from I'm from the Jewish side of the of the aisle. I'm from the Old Testament, but my <laughs> the wrathful Old Testament. <laughs> but but. But my wife is Christian and uh, a Catholic, actually, and my children are Catholic. So God bless. A salut, yeah. as I said, would say. <laughs> but anyway, so yes, I spend time with them because I don't care really about it. it doesn't bother me. Nothing bothers me because it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And the Jesus thing is pretty cool stuff. So what do I, you know, what do I care? He's that one of you. He, yeah, absolutely. A lot of people don't even realize that Jesus died a Jew. No, yeah, yeah. Re, you, yeah. You realize that you can say the word Jew. There's nothing bad about the word Jew, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're not a Jew, you could use the word Jew. It's yeah. a good word. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Just wanted to get that clear to everybody. Oh, uh, gosh. Uh -oh. Knocking things over. Uh, on that note, so uh, I know I, note. I, I, have, uh, I still have, a, uh, I have questions to ask, but if you guys have questions to ask, there is a live microphone right there, so please feel free to line up. With that, I do have a, a couple rules before we do that. The first is, as you can see, there was a lot of people coming up for questions. So if you can please keep your two, four, eight part questions to a minimum. <laughs> uh, if you have a lot of questions, find your best one and ask that. Uh, the second is uh, no request. No, can you say this line as your character? Uh, the voices sometimes tend to come out. Your friends may come out and play, but please no request. Uh, and with that, I have one final question before we get to our audience questions. And, and Kathleen, you, may, you reminded me of this one. And you're, you're new to the convention world. And uh, Marty, you've been doing this for a couple of years. Uh, Bill, you've been doing this for, for a couple of years too. But has there been a moment either somebody sitting next to you at a table across the way you, you see in the green room that you 
sit next to at a panel that you fanboy out and either you Oh, you, I think you got a story. You couldn't say <laughs> yeah, anything, a good one. or you maybe spoke a little bit too much. Marty, you need to go. Okay, well, That's first of all, I mean, <laughs> this just happened. I not just too long had ago. one. <laughs> yeah, I just had a fanboy moment. Oh, I think I know. Uh, because I was really excited that I got to speak to, have a conversation with, and take a photo with Pete Rose. Yeah, <laughs> yeah very cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was really exciting for me. I was all, I, 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 I was just crazy. But the other one was actually that really before Pete Rose entered in recently was Richard Dreyfus, yeah. who for me is one of my all time, yes, for Richard Dreyfus. Yeah. Woo. I'm gonna tell him that, that they plotted for him. Absolutely. All right. I pushed them a little bit, but <laughs> anyway. Yeah, I got to talk to Richard Dreyfus last night after the uh, con ended for a little while because he directed me, the first celebrity that I got directed by in a show back in 1989 called Funny You Don't Look 200. It was a kind of a vaudeville thing, kind of a, and I was doing Goofy in that, and it was a little animated Goofy as Carl Sagan saying billions and billions of words ago. And that's all I said. But I got to work with him, and I went home and told my wife and everything. It was so exciting to work with Richard Dreyfus, you know, from Jaws and all that stuff. And he was delightful and remembered that last night. We got a picture together and all of that. And it was, yeah, well, I still fanboy out all the time. I mean, everybody, all the time. I'm just like, why am I here? Like, I have, like, imposter syndrome, like, at all times oh. in the green room. But recently... So I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. Anyone else? Lord of the Rings? Yes. Um, like, I could, the extended versions, I say, are not extended enough. Like, I could literally watch another hour of each movie. Um, and last week, I was at a con, and all four hobbits were there. So all, all, all four of them. And I begged them. I was like, please, I need to take a picture with these guys if it's possible. Like, I'll bring the door doll, whatever, whatever makes me get this picture, right? And I go in with my husband. And Elijah Wood stands up and he like looks at me and I literally, I, I don't even know what I said. I was like, blah, 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 blah. and my husband's like, get it together, get it together. So I was just like, thank you so much. Like, I, I don't even think I even got to acknowledge the other three. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is so horrible. The picture came out phenomenal. I don't know how, because I was like. You did a photo with all four together? All four together. Oh, wow. yeah. that really cool. And then after, I was like, literally, I was like, goodbye. And then um, Elijah Wood was like, oh my God, like my daughter loves Dora. You have to do a voice record. I was like, I'll do anything. I will fly to your house and meet her personally. But after, I was ugly crying. Like, when I tell you, like, ugly crying, like, you would have thought someone would have passed away in my life. Like, it was, I was like, I need a minute. I need a minute. It was really bad. But a best moment of, well, one of the best moments of my life. It was pretty cool. That's fantastic. Hello, what's your name? Hi, I'm Katie. And uh, with my line of work, I have to have different voices for different situations. And I was wondering, how do you as voice actors find your range, going from the highest bit to the lowest bit, because I'm having trouble extending mine. Having trouble extending. Uh, well, what I, I do to find a voice, or let's say you're gonna voice match something, um, I kind of broke it down. I had to teach kid, you know, uh, students uh, when I, I produce demo tapes for them and find out how to, and well, I teach voice acting too, but uh, I had to kind of break it up into how, how do I come up with a voice? And there's basically three things. I call it my SAT uh, uh, theory. It's situation, articulation, and tone. It's the tones, what your vocal cords do. Does, and you just go, ah, that's my tone. If I make it, ah, it's lower. And if I start talking in that thing, I'm already doing a voice. Now, the articulation is what your tongue does. That's accents and all that kind of stuff. So if I talk like low and uh, I put on an English accent, I've got a character right there. You know, or if I put on a New York accent, I could be this kind of a guy. Now, if I do a high voice like, uh, uh, like this, uh, way up here, you know, that's, uh, okay, I could still do a New Yorker, kind of like that there, or, uh, or, or could do an English or accent, 
you know, with that same high tone, and you can find a voice. You can just kind of go into it. Now, if you're matching a voice, like if I was going to do a Kermit the Frog, let's say, uh, he's got a oh, it's kind of do an awe oh, and uh, find the place in your throat. Oh, and uh, oh, you play around with it, and then you start talking in your regular voice, and then you kind of over articulate a little bit and find his, uh, his music, and it's kind of up and down before long you're doing Kermit the Frog. <laughs> How was that, guys? Was that worth the price of admission? Well, thank you so much. Wow. Hello. Hello. Um, my name's John. Uh, my question is, when you, get, when you take your voice and get into the singing or, like, scary, you know, like, if you're scared or whatever, does that change how how you do it, is it harder and stuff? When you say, uh, uh, what was, that when you're afraid, I figured I'd probably be a good one to answer yeah. that one, right? <laughs> but, uh, so when, when you're fearful, you're saying, does it, does it affect it? Or, or, yeah. Uh, or, or, well, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, I even in real life, it's so funny because you hear me now and I speak in a pretty, Low, you know, mid to low range with a raspy kind of voice, right? Uh, that's what you're getting from me now, right? right. But when things start to, uh, when it's, uh, I always get amazed that anybody even said, well, you're the voice of courage, the cowardly dog. And I'm thinking, if you hear me talking like this, it should be almost unrecognizably courage. Yeah. But when I am getting anxious and getting irritated and get a, I start to go, well, no, you don't even understand what it is. And I'm really, I'm up here, up there. I, got, I went up there. So it kind of happens naturally anyway that I would get up to that level, right? Um, but of course, here's the thing. If I go up there like this, I'm kind of straining my throat a little bit, right? <clears throat> so I find myself going like up here, and I actually catch a little head voice action, which they say use your head voice rather than your your throat, and and then you um, you know it's it saves my voice, and I'm able to actually get a little bit higher. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. My name's Kayla, and I had a, a specific question for Bill. Um, over the weekend, I heard a story where you were. Um, on some kind of road trip with the rest of the Disney cast, or some of them, and um, there was a part where the van was backing up or something, and you guys were doing these funny thing, like the funny uh, things in character. And I just, I thought it was so <laughs> entertaining to hear, and I wanted to know if you remembered and could share anything about that time or experience. I don't know what story that is <laughs> to tell you the truth, but yeah, you use characters all the time, and. Uh, uh, when I was a kid, I used to do voices all the time to, you know, get a rise out of my friends or something like that. And we'd drive through, you know, like, uh, you know, Burger King or McDonald's. And my friends would always say, yeah, do a weird voice, you know, order in a weird voice. And, you know, and I'd, I'd like a Whopper with cheese and Arnold the pig would like a Coke, you know, and they'd look and oh, that's cool, man. So it was like phone jokes and Joe impressions. Joe Wills in, 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 in Dr. Strangelove. <laughs> yeah. Is that, what you would do? <laughs> that was uh, Pat Buttram, if you remember him, from uh, Green Acres. Yes. And, uh, yes. uh, <laughs> yeah, his last movie was a goofy movie, so I got to talk with him, which is a big thrill for me. And, uh, yeah, but it's just, yeah, uh, there's all sorts of things. I don't remember the truck backing up, but, yeah, with uh, Mickey and Donald and Goofy, and we've all done that before when we're just, farting around and having a good time, you know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, questions for Kathleen. Um, What's your name? Oh, sorry. Chris. Chris. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, so I don't know if you're aware of this, but there's a YouTube series about Dora the Grown Up, and it basically takes her through, like, losing her job, getting evicted, moving in with her parents. <laughs> yes. Well. So... If you're familiar with that, I would like to know your thoughts and if they're breaking the law, then we can like sue them or something. Um, I don't know about all of that, but I do know um, that show or you know the, the YouTube, but there's so many different iterations of Dora out there. 
Not appropriate, probably, but it's so funny how creative all of you can be. <laughs> but it's also, like, Dora is so cute, but she's also really easy to make fun of. So I, I appreciate it. I laugh. Um, but that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just, Thank you for your if I could just comment on, on yeah. the Dora thing, because I was really excited to meet Dora, uh, even though I, I did not grow up with Dora, but I, my children watched you, and so I was watching you, and I was like, when I saw you in, you know, in that restaurant or whatever, yeah. when I first saw you, it was like, oh my God, this is Dora, <laughs> and it was like the magic of that character, but yeah. it is true. It's interesting when that easy to make fun of, but why are we making fun of her? I mean, she it's really actually smart stuff, a lot yeah. of that show. Well, it's a lot not of a times she'll ask you a question and then pause for eight hours. So she'll be like, <laughs> can you see the map? Yeah. <laughs> that is... There! <laughs> that is true. I think she can really hear them. Yeah. Louder! <laughs> and then, and I tell, tell this story a lot because when we recorded in the beginning before the show aired, in the script it would say pause, as it normally does like when you ask you a question and pause. When the show came out and I was watching it and she, she paused, but it was like pause, pause, pause. And I'm like, what is happening? And I was like, oh, that's what, <laughs> they missed a few pauses in the script because I didn't know she was pausing for this long. So it was, it was I was surprised with it too, so. But it, that's the fun. It, she's funny. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Hello. My name is Gio. My questions for all of you, and pretty much, pretty simple. Out of all the projects you did over the years, what one do you say is probably your absolute favorite that you worked on, and why? Oh gosh, um, this is like that's hard to t say really because every project has its own ups and downs and everything I think uh, from the fan perspective definitely it'd be a goofy movie because that one everyone talks about that usually and that that's kind of uh, probably my biggest seller is a uh, goofy movie or Kingdom Hearts or something but specific that um, that fan but goofy movie yeah because it's been so long ago it's almost been, it'll be 30 years in 2025 and so people would always come up and you know, and say uh, you know oh wow when I was a kid I, I uh, identified with Max's point of view now I got kids and I identify with Goofy you know so it's like a long time I've been doing this <laughs> but uh, that's probably number one just because of the fan love and the, and that movie's still popular after 28 years yep. it's as popular as ever and uh, so I'm, I'm very thankful about that. Um, for me, I always loved doing the hour specials, and they were normally musicals, and I, I loved to sing, um, and I always wanted to be a princess, and the writers knew that. I always talked about how much I loved, you know, princesses and Disney and all this stuff. So the episode, my favorite episode is Dora's fairy tale adventure, and Dora becomes Princesa Dora, so she becomes a princess, and they made a doll, and I did her voice, and I was literally like, and I think it was a, one of the last episodes that I recorded. And I always carry that with me. I carry that doll. It's on my table. Um, so I really appreciated that from them and doing it. It was my, my favorite. So, of course, you know, I mean, for me, the courage, the, the, you know, the courage, the cowardly dog, the, you know, the TV show was just, for me, a mind-boggling shift, you know, seismic shift in my life when that happened. So... And and the project itself was so unusual. The cre the creativity that, that was everywhere, from the music by Jody Gray to John Dilworth's incredible, wild and off kilter mindset, and you know, and to be able to act within the context of that and create something, a character, you know, within such an incredibly well uh, bolstered creative event was pretty wonderful. Um, so yeah, I would probably have to say that, but you know, you know, I'm, most of my work, most of my life has been live acting, you know, either, either on stage or on uh, television, doing journeyman roles on TV shows and <clears throat> independent films and all that kind of stuff. So being on, on screen is more right for me. So the, the most recent thing is I did a short film that I produced 
and acted in, and somebody else directed it, and uh, uh, about Hunter Thompson, the, the journalist Hunter Thompson, and it's a short film, 18 minutes, and it actually got into a whole lot of, Hunter Thompson, there you are. Oh, that's there. awesome. I'm worried that somebody dresses Hunter Thompson. So um, it, it, it got into 18 film festivals, so this was a wonderful a, a thing for me, you know, to be doing this. And so it's going around, and we will be posting it on YouTube. Shameless self-promotion. I love it. We will, we will be <laughs> posting it on YouTube very, very soon. Once the film festival thing ends, then it'll be permanently posted on YouTube, and then you'll, you know, be on the lookout, anybody that's interested. I know you will be looking for it. Check out my, <laughs> my uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook stuff. I'll be announcing it. But, yeah, that was pretty pretty cool thing. Speaking of Marty, I love your Instagram. It's so much fun. Oh, thank you, man. Everybody in here should be following Marty on Instagram. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Follow me on Instagram. <laughs> you can, Hello. You can follow me, too, and Bill. <laughs> you can follow Bill Farmer, too. And Bill. Yeah. Follow all of us. Because he's very active on... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, my son does most of my stuff. I said, but... How does this work? What's a, is this... In, is well, how does this internet? work? Is that the web? What is that? What... I'm learning. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What's your name? I'm Erica. Hi, Erica. This question is aimed at Marty. I just want to know what came to work in on the Scooby Doo and Code to Carry Dog crossover. How did that feel like to have like mostly like a mostly tamed series with Scooby Doo and Courage, and also how it felt to like voice with Theo White one last time before our passing? Okay, so that's a two parter. I'll address the tame part first. Um, so first of all, um, uh, it, when you say mostly tame, it's interesting that you should say that because that is what I thought was the case. Yes, I do believe, I was worried actually about the crossover because, you know, Courage is its own very, as you say, kind of off-kilter thing. And Scooby is a little bit more kind of a mainstreamy type of sensibility. That's not a dirty word, by the way, mainstream. And, and you know, Scooby is more truly family friendly classic all the way through right i didn't i actually was really excited and i felt that considering that whenever you do a crossover everybody loses each side loses a little bit because now suddenly scooby which is always you know there are people in masks Mostly we're dealing with actual real creatures this time, which is what Courage usually does, so that had to shift. And yes, that the, the strangeness of Courage got to be tamed a little bit. Um, I felt overall really happy with how Courage came out within that movie. I felt they honored him pretty well. So I was actually pleased with how it turned out. Um, and regarding Thea White, uh, what are you going to say about that? God bless her. We certainly didn't know when we recorded it that this was going to be her swan song on, you know. And so uh, it was very, I was so happy. We, we actually became really good friends. Not that we weren't before, but we actually began to be much more in each other's lives for the last two years of her life. Um, you know, while, you know, after the release of this film, until she, you know, well, well, up, leading up to the release of the film. And so it was heart wrenching when she died, but I was so happy that she got to do it, you know. Well. Thank you so much. So we only got a couple minutes left. We're going to try to get through as many as possible. So I mean, we, we have like five minutes. We'll try to talk, to talk yeah, we'll quickly. We'll talk fast. Hi. Um, my name is Enya, and my question is to all of you um, what? Each of you, like, what is your own advice when it comes to, like, creating a new voice for a character? Okay. Uh, well, I kind of went over that a little bit. The uh, SAT, you know, it depends. Look at, the, like, the show Amphibia, which I've done. Uh, and I had a character named Hop Pop in that. And I, he, he kind of had an East Texas kind of accent like that. And uh, I just looked at the picture that they had on what the description of this character was and his attitude, really, just kind of it was a, a gut feeling on what should this guy sound like. I mean, you get a, a baby's picture and you might, yeah, go kind of high or something like that, but then you might go like uh, Baby Herman, you know, with a cigar or something. Uh, you never know. It's just more of a gut feel, and there's hundreds of people auditioning for these things all the time, so your odds of getting it are very low anyway. So 
So you just do the best you can and hope. Jump in. You just jump, jump in. in. Do right. your best thing. What just you try like, something. You and know. yeah, what you think this character should be like, and uh, hope for the best. Don't limit yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello, my name's Ashley. Forgive me, my voice is lost for three days of doing this, but it is so great to meet all of you. You have been such an inspiration to me. Uh, my question is for Bill Farmer, though. I know you've done a lot of work with Disney. Is there anything you've done for the Disney parks that you absolutely love? Oh, yeah. Um, we had, at uh, in Toontown, they had uh, Mickey's house. Mm -hmm. And so you see Donald, uh, Goofy's the projector, uh, projectionist, and the voice kind of goes around. You don't really seem too much except as a shadow on the screen. Mm -hmm. That's fun. A mailbox. Uh, God, the, the ancillary things are always so much fun. Yeah. Um, I got a thing coming up. If you're looking at uh, TV on New Year's Eve, we did a thing, Ryan Seacrest doing the countdown of the ball for 2024. Uh, we recorded that this last week. So we get to be go, 10, 9, hey, <laughs> happy New Year's, and they'll be playing that. So those fun little things that are kind of out of uh, not the regular series stuff are my favorites to do. So yeah, at the park, that's always a lot of fun to do. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hello. Hi, my name is Kenley, and I have a question for Kathleen. Hi. What What is your favorite episode of Dora? Um, I answered this a little bit. So Dora's Fairy Tale Adventure is my favorite um, because of the music and um, one of the songs. I don't know if you guys are familiar, but my favorite song in that. I sing it all the time, but she goes. Um, boinky, 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 bing, we'll get these rocks to sing. You guys remember that? Yes? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just love it. All the music um, in that episode is my favorite. So, yeah. Thank oh, you. For sure. You're so, we got about, we got about, hold on. We got, we got one minute. Let's, let's do this. Speed round. Ready? Okay. Here we go. All right. Getting serious. Here we go. Now. All right. Which All right, one? this is for Bill and Marty. To find the perfect balance between comedy and drama, since you both voice silly voices, how do you find that perfect balance? Uh, Goofy's a comedy character, and I did seven years of stand-up comedy all over the country before I came to California. So I'd kind of learn what was funny from the audience and stuff, and all that. Why didn't they laugh at that? You, you kind of learn that over the years. And don't think about it being oh. funny or not yeah. funny. Just just think yeah. about it being whatever you think it should yeah. be, and the comedy, I believe, will probably come. And adding, uh, uh, like, emotions, like we did in a Goofy movie, says so Goofy's worried about Max and all of this kind of stuff. I just kind of put my own son in the place of Max, and how would I react, and use my emotions. That's, that's basically it. I just kind of put my emotions, what would I do in that situation, and did it. Thank you so much, guys. Hi, mine's just, a, mine's just a quick question, really, for Bill, because you mentioned how earlier you had sort of Dora bringing your family together, Lord of the Rings bringing your family together, Herod brought my family together, but Bill, what was it that brought your family together, show-wise? Oh my gosh, uh, the paychecks. No, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I mean, my son thinks that this job is a, a regular job, you know, or he did when he was little. I mean, we were in Florida and he was, he thought everybody did voice acting. His grandfather said, well, Austin, I got to go off to work. And he'd say, well, what voice do you do? You know, he thought this was normal. And, uh, but just, no, it's, it's a weird profession but it, uh, you know, yeah, we've all rallied around uh, the voice community and just, just the fans, you know, really trying to please people is, is about, uh, that's brought us together pretty much. Last question, no, no pressure. <laughs> Everybody's staring at you. <laughs> For voicing Goofy in video games like Kingdom Hearts versus cartoons, is there that much different behind the Oh yeah, well, board? especially Kingdom Hearts because that was done in Japan first. So I'm listening to the Japanese Goofy in my headphones and, and doing it to picture. And uh, the Japanese language is faster than English. So the Japanese Goofy is very odd to the ears. It's like, oh, doishimakacha, oh, you know, and then I got a gore sora, let's go, you know. And I'm watching the lips, trying to do it in the lip flaps to make it look like it's coming out of uh, the character. And I always have to do it in less time than I would like to do it because Goofy usually talks a little slower, but I got to do it very fast to get it in the in the frame. So that's a big difference. Yeah, it's tougher. Well, thank you all, and let's give it up one more time for thank our you. childhood. Thank you so much.